Irrigation for crops was vital, and the missionaries even began to measure cropland by suertes, or the amount of land that could be irrigated in one day. Based on Spanish models derived from Roman influence, the missionaries and Indians built five dams, seven gravity flow ditches, and an aqueduct, all within the boundaries of San Antonio's mission land. Modern scholars call the native peoples of this region Cohuilticans. The natives inhabited the land from current El Paso to the coastal plains and southward into northern Mexico. They lived in small circular huts made of reeds or grass placed over a frame of bent stalks or canes. They were hunters and gatherers, living in small bands or families. They were generally narrow-faced with high vaulted heads and noses of medium width. Records indicate that there were at least 150 different Native American groups associated with the missions. This diversity of tradition and language overwhelmed the missionaries who were encouraged to speak the native tongues. The physical strength and agility of the vulnerable natives also astonished the European settlers. Pushed from the south by the advancing Spanish, raided from the north by nomadic Apaches, the demoralized and nearly decimated natives embraced Christianity and mission life. They taught the Indians uh, reading and, and uh, and writing and, and math and, and Spanish, the, the Spanish language as well. And they taught, of course, religion in, in many different kinds of ways. Five miles south of downtown San Antonio, Mission San Jose y San Miguel de Guayo is commonly referred to as the queen of the Texas missions. Founded in 1720 by Franciscan friar Antonio Margil de Jesus, it is the largest of the San Antonio missions. Originally founded on the east bank of the river, the mission was moved to its present location in the 1720s. Mission San Jose quickly became the richest of the San Antonio missions, producing enough crops and livestock to sustain itself and to trade with neighboring missions. San Jose was also the strongest as a fortress. Apache and Comanche raiding parties plundered surrounding farms, but did not dare attack the mission. Construction of the San Jose church began in 1768, utilizing local limestone. The facade of the church is richly decorative, featuring statues of St. Joseph, St. Dominic, and St. Francis. On the south side is one of the finest examples of stone carving in North America, the famous Rose Window. The interior is adorned with a vaulted ceiling. The three vaults of the nave are colorfully outlined. Behind the church are the remaining arches of a massive convento, one of the largest along North America's mission trail. The arches are unique, combining Roman, Greek and Spanish influences. The arches influenced future construction but were not duplicated due to limited quantities of stone and rock. In their day, the missions were alive with color. Modern chemical analysis has found pigments of red, yellow, black, and blue. Wood, usually oak, was used for doors, window openings, paneling, and steps. Nearly three miles north of Mission San Jose lies Mission Nuestra Señora de la Purísima Concepción de Acuña. Relocated from East Texas in 1731, Mission Concepción is considered the oldest unrestored stone church in the United States. The church is shaped like a cross. The 45-inch thick walls are constructed with tufa stone quarried on site. Many original interior paintings remain, including the commonly known human eye sun, Sol Humanizado. Some of the symbols are religious in nature, others reflect architectural elements. Similar to other missions, a stairway leads to a small room overlooking the altar. Tradition says at the end of the stairway, this room was used as a sickbay, 
allowing the ill to celebrate mass, remaining separated from the congregation. When the missions formally closed, Concepcion played a major role in Texas independence. Here, 90 volunteers persevered against 400 regulars of the Mexican army. A 30-minute battle, the Texans lost one man, the Mexican troops about 60. Mission San Juan Capistrano was founded in 1731 on the east bank of the San Antonio River, at its current site, seven miles from downtown San Antonio. A smaller mission, and somewhat isolated from the others, the original thatched roof church was replaced in 1756 by this stone building with a wood beam ceiling. Other mission buildings, including Indian housing, were upgraded by 1762. Construction of a larger church was never completed. The entrance gate to the mission demonstrates the Roman arches found throughout the San Antonio missions. At its height, San Juan was a self-sustaining community. Its rich farmland, pastures and orchards made San Juan a regional supplier of agricultural goods. As with the other missions, Indian raids and disease severely crippled San Juan. Secularization began in 1794, and San Juan Capistrano was officially closed in 1824. Partially restored, San Juan is an active parish and has been used for church services since 1909. The southernmost of the San Antonio missions, San Francisco de la Espada, was particularly vulnerable to Apache raids. The sacristy of the mission church was completed in 1745. The entire church was completed in 1756. Of particular note at Mission Espada is the arched entryway. Some historians speculate that the broken or uneven lines of the archway are simply a mistake by the builders. By the time Espada was completed, it was as strong and as fortified as the other missions. In fact, this fortification was well tested in 1835 during the Texas Revolution when James Bowie and a hundred recruits withstood an attack of 200 Mexican troops. Earlier, disease and increasing Apache and Comanche attacks severely weakened the missions. In 1824, all of the Texas missions were secularized, giving the land back to the natives and turning the churches over to local clergy. As with missions throughout North America, secularization in Texas ushered in a long period of deterioration and abuse. Throughout most of the 20th century, historians and preservationists waged a war to save Texas's missions, and the magnificent restoration of San Jose y San Miguel shows that some of the battles have been won. The northwest portion of North America's mission trail led the European missionaries through two modern-day countries, the Pimeria Alta, Home to a string of missions dating back to the late 1600s is divided today between the United States and Mexico. It is here where the blazing climate of the Sonoran Desert is shared by Arizona and Sonora, Mexico, that Catholic missionaries continued their thrust into the northern frontier in the latter part of the 17th century. The Pimeria Alta is named for the area's Piman Indians. Pimeria Alta in Spanish means northern lands of the Piman Indians. Along the various rivers of the Pimeria Alta, a chain of missions blossomed, some of which would later be admired for their grandeur and architectural splendor. Examples of Baroque, frontier Baroque, and neoclassical architecture, these missions brought together many structural features from the old world, including domes and typically Spanish ornate facades. From Tucson's mission San Javier del Bac to Sonora, Mexico's Caborca, the Pimeria Alta missions are commonly thought of as Father Kino country. Italian Jesuit father Eusebio Francisco Kino was a pioneer in bringing European culture and the Catholic faith to the Native Americans of this area. He has become a symbol of the Pimeria Alta. <laughs> The story of California, and ultimately the missions and European expansion, actually begins in the waters of the Pacific Ocean in the 1500s. 
Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, a Spaniard, explored the California coast in 1542 and opened the door for later Catholic mission development. But European expansion was not sudden in California. More than 200 years would pass after Rodriguez Cabrillo's voyage before Spanish missionaries would reach the northwest coast of North America. When their mission chain was finally complete, the Spaniards had created the links needed to expand into California. California now is divided between two countries, but the original missionaries merely separated this vast area of land into Alta and Baja, Upper and Lower California. In fact, the name California was not the Spanish missionaries' first choice for the miles of coastline and valleys. The Carolinas was the original thought. In all, the Europeans would oversee the construction of 40 missions in both Alta and Baja California. 19 were built first in what is today Baja California, Mexico, beginning with Loreto, once the original capital of the Californias. Later, 21 missions would be added in Alta California, stretching from San Diego to Sonoma. Unlike other territories of North America, three separate orders of the Catholic Church played a role in the establishment of the California missions. The first missionaries to arrive, the Jesuits, were led by Father Juan Maria de Salvatierra, a close friend of Father Quino in the Pimeria Alta. Later, following the Jesuits' expulsion from the Americas in 1767, Baja California's mission project was continued by the Franciscans and the Dominicans. At the urging of the Spanish crown, the Franciscans, guided by Father Junipero Serra, soon changed their focus from Baja to Alta California. From Baja California's mission Nuestra Señora de Loreto, Serra embarked on his 650-mile trek, founding the first mission in Alta California, that of San Diego de Alcalá, in 1769. From there, Father Serra would help establish the first nine of California's 21 missions. Among them, San Juan Capistrano, San Gabriel, San Luis Obispo, San Buenaventura, Santa Clara, San Antonio de Padua, San Francisco de Assis, and San Carlos Borromeo de Carmelo, Father Serra's final resting place in the town of Carmel. Religious activity centered around the mission's beautiful and impressive churches. These religious centers feature strikingly colorful designs evident here on the ceiling of Mission San Francisco de Assis and also throughout the California chain. Originally linked by El Camino Real, the King's Highway, the California missions were intended to stand about a day's journey apart by horseback. Today, modern bells mark this once regal road. For the most part, El Camino Real borders the coast where the first two California missions were built to ensure easy access by sea and thus facilitate the arrival of necessary goods. The mission bells signaling the arrival of padres and other visitors have been a useful and beautiful part of the California missions. From the Campanario at San Diego de Alcalá to the Twin Towers at Santa Barbara. A cemetery sits adjacent to nearly all of the mission churches, where natives and others who helped lay the foundation for modern California are buried. What is now a California tradition, red tile roofs, was first used at Mission San Antonio de Padua, and later copied at the other 20 missions, and ultimately throughout the entire state. Realizing the fire hazards of the old Tule thatch roof, the Padres looked to the Spanish model which used dried clay for tiles. This new roof had two advantages over the old. It protected against fire and was also waterproof. The missions of California were some of the last built, but ultimately became the most admired along North America's mission trail. That the mission system fell into ruin following Mexico's independence from Spain. Mexico's new government, which inherited the vast territory of New Spain and a continuing conflict regarding support of a mission system, devoted few resources to remote areas like California, unraveling the 300-year-old mission system. The missions, as vibrant community centers, basis for settlement, lost their vitality. But restoration and preservation keeps much of the chain intact today. North America's missions, 
shrines to the world-altering exploits of their founders, and houses of worship for modern civilization.